Welcome to the Joe Schmo Show uh, number three. Uh, for anybody of our repeat viewers, we're hopefully getting slightly better here uh, as each show goes along. Today I'm joined again by our uh, routine guests, Jeff and Emilio. How are you guys today, Jeff? Fantastic. Emilio? I'm doing good. Awesome. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. So um, what we were going to talk about today was a couple of uh, different topics. And just to kind of briefly outline them, uh, we're going to start with talking about a letter that uh, um, Emilio and I had the pleasure of receiving from the Nevada, what was it, Secretary of State or uh, something like this that basically uh, talked about how a license would be required now to operate ATMs within the state of Nevada. Uh, we're going to re-enter the topic briefly about the IRS and about taxation of Bitcoin and how you calculate uh, profits and such uh, when you're an average Bitcoiner. Um, we're going to talk about Coin ATM Radar, which is a uh, website that lists all the Bitcoin ATMs in the world, and now they've started listing things other than ATMs. And lastly, we're going to discuss an article about Bitcoin, the choice for a new America, which talks about how Bitcoin is the number one cryptocurrency. So, um, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, Emilio, did you receive this letter from Nevada? From Let me pull it up here. Did, do you have it in front of you? Uh, I actually didn't receive the, uh, the letter from Nevada. It wasn't a letter. It was an email. But let me pull it up real quick here, and I'll explain exactly what it, uh, what it says. Jeff, you're not in the ATM space, so I assume you had not inquired about uh, whether or not you needed a money transmission license to operate a Bitcoin ATM in the state of Nevada. No, not Nevada. I did apply at one point in Colorado, but not Nevada. So in what I did is, or EasyBit did, is a few years back, uh, we went and applied uh, to every state that we were operating in. We told them, hey, we might want to um, uh, operate a Bitcoin ATM. Do you guys require us to have a license or anything, um, et cetera? And a lot of these states said, uh, no, not right now, but we might in the future. So now what's happened is uh, I got a letter from Nevada. Um, let me just pull it up here and read it to you guys. I don't think it's anything secret or anything like that. So a letter that I received uh, approximately uh, one week ago uh, from Re Bitcoin ATM License Inquiry, which I sent over a year ago, uh, from Julie Havenhold, something like this. Hi, Michael. Please be advised that the Nevada Financial Institutions Division now requires licensure as a money transmitter for Bitcoin kiosks slash ATMs and other virtual currency related businesses under Nevada Revised Statutes, NRS Chapter 671. The application can be found at our website, blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you have further. Uh... So, Amelia, do you have ATMs in Nevada? No, but I was actually going to put one in there, so uh, maybe I, I can't anymore. <laughs> I guess you got to reconsider. I mean, you don't you don't typically, if a state's going to require a heavy, uh, heavily expensive, burdensome, long process to get a money transmission license, it's probably best we don't, uh, as at typically ATM operators, we just kind of leave those states out of our networks, right? Yeah, I mean, we have so many other states to, to worry about. I, mem I remember I had an ATM in Vermont. And then they kicked me out because they said I needed a money transmitter license, even though Coinbase was operating in Vermont and they didn't have a money transmitter license either. Uh, but they were they, they were still allowed to do business, but I wasn't. And Vermont, you know, there's not really money people in Vermont, so I just left and, and went to a nearby state. I mean, in the end, this is kind of hurting, in my viewpoint, it's hurting the consumer more than anyone else because... Uh, they're the ones that aren't going to have access to these ATMs. It's not the ATM companies that the regulation is going to end up uh, hurting. It's the actual consumers. Yeah, and yeah also, they're going to have less choices. Jeff, go ahead. Also now, a lot of uh, these rewards uh, that are coming out on crypto, cryptocurrency rewards, you know, use a Visa card, you get a cryptocurrency reward. There's also uh, gaming. Um, I think there was a player unknown battlegrounds that are now... Uh, offering uh, cryptocurrency based rewards. So I wonder how those uh, new ventures are going to are they going to run afoul of Nevada's new statutes and rules? Well, exactly. It's going to be very complicated, especially with Nevada being uh, so big into gaming and all that. But uh, uh, back to the other point, which is, you know, if, if states are going to make it difficult for the nationwide ATM operators to enter, I think a lot of us are just going to stay out. And we saw this with like Bitstamp and Coinbase and a few of the others with Hawaii and with uh, Washington State when they said, you know, we're not sure, but we're going to say no until we are. 
uh, you know, I, I myself operated an ATM in Hawaii, and then they said, "Hey, don't do that." So we, uh, you know, we had to box it up and ship it out. So uh, in the end, I don't know. It, it just, you know, it cost us a lot of money, but it also cost the Hawaiians the access to uh, one of the only ATMs they ever had in their state. Yeah, that's usually the ready fire aim model. That's the problem with that. What do you think, Emilio? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, same thing happened to me, Vermont. I, I think I'm, I was the only Bitcoin ATM that's ever set foot in, in Vermont, and uh, it was just a small skyhook machine. It was, it was actually a piece of crap, but sometimes it worked, and it was kind of convenient for people who wanted to just instant Bitcoin and didn't want to have to go through the lengthy process of signing up on Coinbase, which could take a couple of weeks or months at, uh, at some of the high volume points. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic then. So uh, last week, I believe Jeff had received a letter from the IRS. Emilio, I can't remember if you, yeah, you had as well. And I yep. had received some letter, but I wasn't sure what it was. Well, that was not a letter regarding this. It was actually a tax credit I was owed. But um, unfortunately, since that letter, I also did receive the same letter that you guys did which is the seven page one that doesn't require any specific action, but says that I need to um, go back and kind of review things. And what some of the speculation on Reddit and some of these other uh, media, social media platforms, whatever you want to call them, uh, some of the speculation was that, uh, you know, this is just all the Coinbase customers got one of these. So were you guys both Coinbase customers? Yeah. Yeah. And like, 20 what was it 2014 but then they closed my account so not anymore. right we, we <laughs> talked about this last time mine as well yeah. but um so we could we cannot conclude anything that it's not only sent to coinbase customers because so far everyone on this show who has gotten a letter has been a coinbase customer wait a second i think it might not be coinbase customers because my mom didn't get a letter and uh, she's bought millions of dollars with bitcoin and she's a coinbase customer so Okay. Uh, so, and she, that's a high volume. She's a high volume user. Is so. she sure she hasn't gotten a letter? <laughs> uh, well, that's a good question because she's a little bit disorganized, but I'll, maybe, I'll have to check maybe back. Maybe she's but... higher volume than us and uh, <laughs> she's getting the other letter, the uh, the doomed one that uh, we're all fearing here. Maybe. Well, I got, uh, I got mine a few days late because it was sent to an old address, uh, my Colorado address, but it got forwarded. So if she's moved, you know, she may need she, to wait a few hasn't, days. Hasn't moved. She's lived at the same place for, I don't know, over 20 years. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll have to check to see because sometimes she loses letters. So basically, I got the same letter we discussed last week, which was essentially that, uh, hey, this is your warning. Go back and review all your transactions. And so I started sleeping on this and thinking about it. And um I mean, how do you, what, what am I going to do when I was gifted a Bitcoin or say I bought a Bitcoin at $10 or $50 or whatever, and then over a year I spent that Bitcoin slowly, $5 a beer, $150 uh, on a hotel room or whatever like this. Am I supposed to go back and figure out exactly every single time that I made a Bitcoin uh, purchase using Bitcoin to buy uh, an item, which is when I technically would be IRS taxable for trading my property? Am I supposed to go back and figure out every time I spent five dollars on a beer exactly what the Bitcoin price was, and then calculate my um, uh, my profit through there? Or do you guys have any, have you guys thought about this a little bit? Do you have any ideas how we're going to figure this out? I I don't have any Jeez. brilliant ideas other than it's going to be uh, really confusing and complicated for a lot of people because that's just one circumstance. In my case, I did a lot of remittances, right? I, I usually during that time primarily for remittances to India. Uh, but I also kept some. So the question is, you know, which transaction is a buy and which transaction is a sell? It's exactly what you're saying, because I bought a lot and I sold a lot. And exactly so which, what is which the rate? Which one do I tie? It's not just a straight buy and sell. It's buy, 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 sell, 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 buy, buy. Sell. I don't know how to tie that up. What do you think, Amelia? I'm fucked. I have, <laughs> I have no idea. So I guess just everybody, what the government's going to do to us is they're just going to drive us all bankrupt in accounting fees over the next couple of years. I think that's the <laughs> idea. But here's what we ought to do. We ought to build an AI just for this. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably consider that an act of terrorism, an AI <laughs> that could figure out the tax code. <laughs> 
Well, it's certainly going to be interesting because it's, uh, again, like we discussed last week, uh, all three of us have traded on exchanges that don't exist anymore. And uh, by the way, I can't remember if it was Emilio or if it was Jeff that had mentioned um, Camp BX, but uh, that reminded yep. me to log yeah. into my account and Cloudflare says they don't exist anymore. So last I logged in, I had about 1.2 or 1.5 Bitcoin maybe sitting there and I had a $250 daily withdrawal limit. So I was trying to withdraw and they were charging some crazy withdrawal fee. So I was try, you oh, know, man. trying to withdraw 250 bucks a day and then they just disappeared. But, um, you know, this is again an example of here I am trying to get my taxes ready and I'm logging into sites like Camp BX and these other websites that I used to, uh, you know, do financial transactions on that were completely unregulated and trying to get my books together for Uncle Sam. And I, I don't even know how to uh, begin. You know, it's just a uh, I, 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 the websites don't load. The people don't exist anymore. Uh, you know, it's, it's just going to be an absolute nightmare. Have you guys started uh, since uh, in the last year? Have you guys uh, started keeping better track of your your trades and such? Nope. <laughs> yeah i i can't say i have i've become even more busy <laughs> well i think that on the plus side i think that a lot of the exchanges we're working with now are a little bit more i'm, I'm not saying better regulated but i'd say they're more regulated than before and maybe uh, some of these uh profits and losses will just get a statement at the end of the year that tells us hey uh, on our exchange you made and lost this and we hand that off to our uh tax advisor and they put it in our uh, yeah, our tax form but uh, that, that's the way it should be i mean uh japan they do that um my wife is japanese and uh, she has an account uh, on one of the japan exchanges i don't know which one but every month she gets an email uh statement uh detailing profits and loss and yen so it can be done Monthly is a little extreme, but I mean, I think that in the U.S., even every financial institution like TD Ameritrade or anybody has to give you a yearly report that shows what you've lost and won, which is good enough for me if they could just uh, kind of do anything, you know, anything that gives me some certainty as to some profit or loss, because I don't know what Coinbase has reported or anybody else has reported. And they didn't really report. What happened was they were uh, subpoenaed or whatever and gave over all yeah. the records. So I don't even know what's good, anybody's going to make sense of that. Uh, all right. Well, why don't we move on to the next uh, little topic here? And uh, Emilio, you might also be familiar more with this than Jeff is, but uh, Coin ATM Radar is a website that is essentially the Google Maps or whatever you want to call it, the yellow pages of Bitcoin ATMs. And uh, this site lists uh, over 5,000 ATMs from 500 plus operators all over the world. Uh, Vlad, the owner of it, has been around forever. Uh, this website's been around forever. And it's kind of, again, the definitive source of locations for ATMs. And approximately last week, they started, uh, you know, there used to be 5,000 ATMs globally. And now all of a sudden, if you check all the boxes on their website, there's 40,000 tellers and ATMs and places that you can convert Bitcoin. Emilio, did you notice this? Yeah, I think it was a, a little a checkbox that, that automatically got filled, um, and that's what made the difference. But I, what I just did, I just I just unchecked it, so I could see all the ATMs just over again. But yeah, yeah, that was interesting. I think they were listing CoinMe, CoinStar locations, uh, a lot of Western Union and MoneyGram locations as well. Yeah, I saw that. And in Spain, for example, they're listing. Uh, uh, in Barcelona, all of a sudden, I noticed there was like 15 ATMs before, and now there's 100 because there's all these people where you can pay through a um, – it's kind of like where you pay your cell phone. Over here in Europe, everybody uses these prepaid cell phones. And so you go every week or two weeks, and you put 10 euro on your account, and you can do that at any convenience store or whatever else. So over here now, what they've done is they've made it where you can go and top up your Bitcoin account through these prepaid cell phone and bill pay terminals. That's amazing. That's real neat. And I think that's just going to drive more adoption. You know, uh, I was just, uh, I'm just looking at the site now. Yeah, there's 147,000 other services, uh, yeah. which can be a lot of different things. So that's, and that's I, I think they might even be a better source now for Bitcoin accepting locations than coin maps is because coin maps doesn't yeah. even have an iPhone application. They do. I think they've got a lot more active development going on over there. What do you think, uh, Emilio? Do you use Coin ATM Radar? I'm sure you do for your business. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I mean, I love to pay for the promoted locations. And, I mean, it just has a, a whole list of 
uh, of services that you can buy Bitcoin. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I even use competing ATMs or competing services to buy to buy Bitcoin. So um, it works out. It's a, it's a great service. They're always improving. I've also used uh, competing ATMs many times. I wouldn't really call them competing ATMs. I would say fellow ATM providers, uh, fellow advocates of uh, ease of use of Bitcoin. But I have definitely been before where I got uh, somewhere and was out of money and literally was sitting in the taxi saying, hey, man, uh, I don't have enough money to take you there. But here, look on my iPhone. Here's the um, location of an ATM. And I just talked to them. It works. Uh, I will give you my iPhone. If it doesn't, please take me there so I can try to get some Bitcoin. So, I mean, yeah, I've definitely used uh, fellow providers' ATMs all the time. I mean, it's a, it's a convenience factor. But, um, Jeff, you ever used a Bitcoin ATM? I have quite a few times. I even used uh, the new Coinstar one. <laughs> I, I put in, I just had a, a, a jar of, well, I already emptied it, but I keep a jar of coins, right? And when it gets about half full, uh, I take it over to the eight, Coinstar and I get, you know, uh, some, some Bitcoins. Um, but I'm just looking at their website. It looks like ATM, Bitcoin ATM installations has grown dramatically. Uh, in 2018, they were sitting at about 2,000. In 2019, more than 4,000. And it looks like the growth rate is accelerating. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's been accelerating hugely. I mean, Emilio and I, I, I don't know, the last time I talked to Emilio before we started this show is probably like two or three years ago. But um, it, we've been in this ATM stuff forever, and, it, you know, literally it's exploded over the last year. I mean, I, what was it last year? It was probably only 2,000 ATMs maybe or less. And uh, right. the last it's been doubling basically every year. So, um, it, yeah, it's been crazy. But, I mean, with that, I think we're also starting to reach a, uh, a kind of point of market saturation a little bit um, as well. Uh, just out of curiosity to back up a little bit, Jeff, did you find that ATM that you used, the Coinstar one, did you find it through Coin NTM radar? I assume not. It sounds like you've been using it previously, and when they started doing a Bitcoin, that it made it even better. Yeah, right. It's basically at the local Walmart. So, um, but yeah, that's the thing. I think since uh, they added Bitcoin, a lot more people have been using that Coinstar machine. So I've never seen a line on it, and the other day I saw three people in line waiting to use it. And Emilio, I assume you have obviously found uh, an ATM before through uh, Coin, ATM, Coin ATM Radar, if not just for checking out your competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I found the Coinstar new, uh, locations in New Jersey, and I've used those uh, like three times now. They're really convenient. Uh, the fees aren't really what they're advertised. They advertise it's 4% fees, but they're more like 7 or 8 uh, But it's still cool, and I, I use them. Um, so, as well as other other a ATMs as well, so yeah, it's, it's nice. I love it. You mean the Coinstar ones, yeah? Yeah, the Coinstar ones, yeah. So far as Coin ATM Radar, how do you feel as an operator? Because all of a sudden they have um, introduced this, uh, um, you know, all of a sudden there's twice as much competition on there for us. All right, so back to the original question here, which was, as an ATM operator, how do you feel now that uh, Coin ATM Radar has uh, introduced, instead of just the 5,000 Bitcoin ATMs and some terminals, whenever you go on there, now there's all sorts of competition for us on there. Coinstar machines, uh, all these other uh, terminal-based machines, all this kind of stuff. Uh, do, you, do you feel that's kind of like a Coin ATM Radar who is supposed to be our you know, definitive source for Bitcoin ATMs who we've loyally paid advertising fees to and all for many years. Now, all of a sudden, they've introduced a thousand other ways to buy Bitcoin. You know, I actually don't mind. Uh, I, I like it uh, because, you know, it's just another way to buy Bitcoin. Um, and honestly, uh, I, I need to start uh, expanding the ideas beyond uh, the ATM. So maybe... Uh, Maybe it'll encourage me to uh, get tellers and other yes. options for people to that's purchase true. Bitcoin. Yeah, I just wonder how the uh, how that's going to work out in the end for the ATMs. I think that uh, uh, these multi-use terminals ultimately might be better with the Coinstar, whatever it's called. If you were to um, if you were to want to buy a thousand euro worth of Bitcoin and you don't have or a thousand dollars, you don't have coins. Do you put that in the machine or you go to a, like a uh, to the cash register? Uh, yeah, no, they, with Coinstar, it's only coins. Uh, it's only coins. And I think, 
I'm not sure, but I think there's probably a limit of probably like a hundred or two hundred dollars or something. Um, you know, because it's really uh, the idea is just your excess coin uh, being converted. So yeah, if you want to do more, you're gonna to have to go to a real ATM. No, I think that I saw on their uh, website that you the limit was like fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so uh, Emilio, do you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was maxing them out. I was doing $2,500 uh, every day at the Coinstar. In coins. Um, and I did that. Wow. Uh, no, 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 not in coins. In, uh, in $100 bills. <laughs> and you, you put that into the machine, or you are taking that to the, um, to the register? Inside the machine. I had a bill acceptor, uh, like, on the right side, I want to say, of the machine. Uh, and I just fed them through, just like uh, any of the other ATMs. Wow. And when you talk about that limit, how what kind of KYC and AML is our friends over at Coinstar? What are they doing? Uh, they uh, they ha so I, I registered online on the on the portal. Uh, I put my date of birth, my SSN. Uh, I believe it was my SSN. I definitely uh, took a picture of my driver's license and I uploaded that on there. So it's not um, like I, us. They're not doing this on the machine. They're doing it online ahead of time. Yeah, you, or have after. To, you have to really. Or after. Yes, or after, right? Yeah, so so you can actually uh, purchase the twenty five hundred dollars before you get a voucher that's printed out, uh, and then you can use uh, that voucher and sign up, and then do all the KYC after the fact. So it's an interesting and kind of neat way of. I of like doing that. It. That's a smart move. Yeah, because then you you kind of. Uh... Well, I would feel cheated as a customer because this is what actually a lot of exchanges did to us. They took our money and then three years later, all of a sudden they say, wait, you want to withdraw? We're going to need you to overnight this here and a lawyer or a, or a what do you call them? A um, actual, not an actuary, a, uh, well, I had to go to the secretary of state or something, an apostle. You have to apostle this document and you have to have this notarized and this letter for this. And it's like, wait a second, man, when I deposited this, he didn't ask anything. So I kind of feel cheated, but that's actually kind of an interesting way of doing KYC. Maybe with the ATMs, what we should do is take people's money and then let them go online and uh, fill out a form. I think my customers would uh, probably uh, punch me in the face. <laughs> I think it, it that might might be a good option for for some people for for other people uh yeah not so much I mean I, it was pretty simple it took me 15 20 minutes uh but yeah I mean it could it could save on some of the scams uh but maybe if not if they're if they're sending a picture of the the code to some person in India well then the, the scam's still going to happen <laughs> so yeah I, I don't really know what to do but uh yeah, it's it's cool. I like it. But hey, I'm just Jeff. surprised that you know Coinstar for like a, a fifty dollar transaction requires all that KYC AML when you know you go to even the currency exchange desk. You know, let's say you're at the airport. You know, they don't ask for any kind of ID for exchanging a thousand dollars of dollars a yen. So it's just fascinating that there's a lot more regulation on these small transactions than any other type of transaction. And it's the coin stars, they're only cash in from what I understand, right? You can't yeah. take cash out. Correct. Yeah, cash in only, yeah. Cash in and then it's gift card or Bitcoin out. What's the gift card? Is that like a Visa? Oh, you can get like an Amazon or a Walmart and have like over 500 different gift cards. And, you and guys they don't require KYC AML. So I can go from change or from fiat into gift card without KYC or AML, or I can't use the machine at all. Correct. Correct. That's the only way to get it without an ID. But if you go to Bitcoin, they want, you know, your, your driver's license, social security card, and I'm, still, I'm sure one day your, your blood type and <laughs> your you fingerprint, know, your fingerprint. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Okay. And again, you guys said the fees, because I last time I checked, I thought they were like 12% on Coinstar. You're saying now they're down to like 4% or something? That's really good, actually. Yeah, when so I did it, add, it was like 8%. 8%, 8 Emilio? 8% yeah. worse. Yeah, they advertise as 4%, but it's like more close to 7 or 8 when yeah, they say four percent, do uh, you guys know what exchange they're basing that on, or what rate they use, or they have their own internally arbitrarily calculated rate? 
it's arbitrary and it's on the machine. It lists the price of the Bitcoin on the machine. But I've noticed that when the market crashes, uh, yeah. their price kind of stays the same. <laughs> okay, so Good there's a little latency there, yeah. yeah. Good to know. Yeah. All right, well, unless you guys have any other comments on uh, Coin ATM Radar and their move to start becoming more like coin maps and listing more locations, I think, uh, Jeff, you were just kind of uh, trying to explain that, hey, you know, more adoption, more easy access to finding locations, the the better, even if it is our competition. Emilio, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, no, I I, I like I like the the more locations. Um, I mean, I, I still find that a lot of people use the ATMs. In fact, it's probably increased uh, for us in the past six months. Even even though these new locations have kind of popped up. Um, the, the other locations, they, they need to kind of be more consistent. I mean, besides the Coinstar machines, like the, the Tellers and the Western Union thing uh, is really hit or miss, mostly miss. What I worry about with the Coinstar thing is what kind of support they're offering. Because I know like at EasyBit, we spend sometimes 30 minutes with someone on the phone explaining to them, you know, what a confirmation is, how to buy their first Bitcoin, etc., uh, what's Coinstar doing? Are they just leaving a bunch of pissed off people at Bitcoin because uh, you know they put a hundred dollars into the machine and they can't figure out what they're supposed to do next or where their Bitcoin is? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, great for question. the average user. I mean, I know for you, Emilio, it must be very similar to me. I'm sure that you guys get all sorts of um, calls every day where it's, "Hey, I'm at your Bitcoin machine here," and uh, Alabama and I'm trying to figure out how I how I buy me them bitcoins and I put my hundred bucks in and I, I I don't know bitcoins came out and and we you know we have to go through and explain the whole uh, yeah hey don't worry it takes about thirty minutes and it'll come to the uh, you know onto your paper wallet or onto your phone or wherever you but this takes a lot of time I can't see a company like Coinstar spending that time I don't think their average customer until they started doing Bitcoin was valuable enough for them to spend any time doing that. I think you're right. Any yeah, thoughts? you're 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 absolutely right. I mean, uh, I I didn't call their support. Um, I but uh, for the average person, I, I really don't know. They they must be swamped with calls. Well, I think maybe for next uh, week, I'm going to find out their if... phone number and maybe we'll give them a call on the uh, show and. Uh, pretend to be an average Bitcoiner and say that uh, I just put 25 cents in the machine and I didn't get no Bitcoins out. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, that should be a fun time. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeff, did you have any final points there on the Coin ATM Radar offering uh, many more new alternatives, not only to buy, but also to spend Bitcoin now as opposed to just listing ATMs? It's good for adoption. All right, so moving on to our final topic here then, we have Bitcoin, the choice for a new America. Jeff, did you want to go ahead and introduce this topic? Sure, yeah, with an article that I posted up on BTC Manager uh, about a week ago here. Uh, more Americans are buying Bitcoin every quarter uh, than ever before, uh, to the point that there's 365 million in Bitcoin sold uh, in three months. Uh, so it's it's amazing that I think uh, people are finally waking up and realizing that Bitcoin is much better in light of all the problems with tariffs and trade wars with China and Brexit and all that. You know, the only safe haven really is Bitcoin. Emilio? Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised by that. I've, I've convinced a lot of family members and friends. I have even one friend who uh, decided to, you know, out of nowhere, just buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and he really didn't he's a kind of a scared type of guy uh, but I convinced him and I I kind of taught him about the banking system and the economics behind why Bitcoin is sound uh, I played with him uh, I mean I, I gave him five dollars worth of Bitcoin like four years ago um, and he never really bought any Bitcoin but this past 12 months he's been investing you know I think it's 20% of his income into Bitcoin uh, every month on the first. It's just an automatic uh, ACH and, and converted into Bitcoin. Uh, and he loves it. So I really am not surprised. 
that uh, people are are buying Bitcoin. It's it's sound money. Uh, banks are are limiting withdrawals and deposits. They're, the banks are getting used to it too. I mean, I, I logged in. Uh, it's been years, but I, I bought all these marijuana stocks years ago, and I logged into my Fidelity uh, account, and it popped up and said, "Do you have Coinbase? We can link to that." I mean, five years ago, when I used to withdraw from Coinbase or from any of these exchanges, and the bank was like, what's this? It's like, oh, well, um, it's a digital currency. Um, <laughs> what's that? Where did you get it from? What's it used for? But now it literally pops up and asks, uh, do you want to link your account to uh, Coinbase? But yeah, go ahead. Continue what you were saying. Absolutely. I agree. No, no. What, what bank is that? That sounds like a cool bank. Fidelity. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do a little. Oh. I'm going to do a little actual pitch for them here. Um, Fidelity is a great bank, and I'll tell you why. They're online and they're free. They're a brokerage, and they offer free ATM withdrawals all over the U.S. and the world. So in Spain here, if I stick my Fidelity card in ATM, and it charges me five euro, they refund that at the end of the month. I've had nothing but excellent service with them. I cannot recommend them more. Wow, that's very cool. And now if they're going to start uh, doing some Bitcoin stuff, awesome. But uh, they're a major bank. They're, they're really a brokerage, not a bank, but they have a bank as part of them. What do you think about that, yeah. Jeff? Yeah, I think it's good. I have uh, myself. I've had Charles Schwab. I've used him for years. Um, I can do I have online. Schwab as well. wire, they're great. Online wire transfers. Same thing. The thing about Schwab is they have favorable currency exchange rates. So when I go from yen to dollar, I get it better than anybody else can ever get it. Um, but yeah, they're also friendly to, to crypto. What, who do they work with with crypto? Uh, well, they're friendly, meaning when I try to wire to the exchange or whatever, they don't even think about it. Um, I've had uh, accounts at Bank America, Wells, Wells closed my account at one point for doing a crypto transaction. Bank of America sent me a thing asking if I was a money services business. Emilio, do you have any banks you want to talk about? Don't feel necessary to uh, outline anything uh, you don't want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bank of America is awful. Chase is awful. PNC is awful. TD Bank is terrible. Uh, Key Bank is bad. Uh, Pioneer Savings Bank at least had the courtesy of of telling me that they were going to close my account in X date and I should find a new bank. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had really bad, bad uh, experiences with banks. Uh, I've had the Secret Service called on me. I've had police called on me for depositing large amounts of cash. Um, I mean, it probably doesn't help that my name's Emilio. Um, I wish I had a white a white name. I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I look like a, a white. I'm a, a white I'm a Michael, guy. and I get the same trouble. So don't feel that you're discriminated against because your name really? don't like us because we're Bitcoiners. Okay, all right. Because uh, I have Joseph, and uh, he he really doesn't have these problems. He deposits like, you know, $200,000 in cash in the account. And they, they're like, Hey, Joseph, how's it going? Business is going well. It's great. Great. Yeah. It might be branch specific also. Um, but yeah, just had a hard time with banks. I mean, I have such a hard time with banks. I, I, I fantasize about starting my own bank and, and kind of facilitating I about that for years. Yeah facilitating and helping people like me and other operators to kind of have a consistent bank in which uh, we, we can work with them. We can follow all the, the rules and, and still not close their account and, you know, follow the reports that the, the government requires. And We've had a few that tried. Like, I don't know if you remember Internet Archive Federal Credit Union, and now there's somebody, Silver Bank, I think they're called out in California that's trying to do all yeah. this Bitcoin yep. stuff. But let's see how long they last. So back to the article here uh, that Jeff was talking about. Um, Bitcoin is still the main currency, the main cryptocurrency. Nobody's overticking it. I was talking to Roger Ver a few days ago, and he happened to mention, hey, uh, that's all great and everything, but uh, Bitcoin Cash, or Bcash as some people call it, is um, still the second largest ever cryptocurrency in the world. Is that true? Well, on Live Coin Watch. Um, which I what I use to try to monitor the price. Uh, Ethereum and Ripple still rank ahead of Bitcoin Cash in okay. terms of market cap. So Ethereum is not really a currency. So do we really count that? And Ripple was pre mined. So do we really count that? I'm not trying to defend Roger so here. But. I'm, I'm with you there. If you exclude those, then yes, Bitcoin Cash is number two. 
Let me see exactly how he phrased it. Amelia, what do you think? <laughs> That's probably a bigger than Bitcoin Cash. I think Monero, um, maybe not as big as, as Bitcoin Cash, but um, yeah. I mean, Bitcoin Cash is still relevant in some way. Uh, the fees are are less. I just don't think there's that many users right now. All right. Sorry, I had misquoted what Roger said. He said, quote, Bitcoin Cash is now the second most used cryptocurrency for payments. Wow. That's a lot of qualifiers. Uh, I don't yeah. know how we can determine that. In terms of volume, Bitcoin is at $13 billion. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is at 754 million. So yeah, there's a little difference there. I don't necessarily disagree, though. I think he'd said elsewhere that it was uh, the second uh, largest crypto at this point, and I don't really, I, I don't think Vitalik or anybody over at Ethereum ever. I, there was back when it was ten dollars, them saying it was overvalued. I don't think anybody ever intended Ethereum to be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars for any you know real use. It's really supposed to be gas, right? Anti-spam. Well, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be Ethereum was supposed to be a little bit more programma uh, programmatic. I mean, the big thing with the smart contracts with Ethereum, they wanted a way that you could put something into like a virtual escrow uh, to pay somebody, and it certainly evolved to way beyond that. But that was the original idea. All right. Well, let's tie this up here. So, um, any last comments on Bitcoin is the the most used, and it's still being adopted uh, very strongly. Any any thoughts on that, Emilio? You want to start? Um, yeah. I mean, I I think Bitcoin will be king for for a lot. I I tried to sell other cryptos on on the Bitcoin ITAMs, and really uh, they didn't really sell. Uh, I think people just are accustomed to Bitcoin. They know it's reliable. Um, and they know the the value is 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 a lot less volatile than some of the other currencies. Um, I don't think there's really a a reason for uh, for other currencies unless the fees get too high. Then you know I, I agree with the Bitcoin Cash philosophy of lower fees, but I think that's just the economics and how Bitcoin was created. So I don't know. Okay, and Jeff, any last comments there on uh, Bitcoin being uh, heavily adopted and uh, continuing to grow and still being the number one cryptocurrency? Do you see it going away anytime soon? No, everybody that's ever bet against Bitcoin has lost so far. So uh, <laughs> how many times has it died already? So yeah, this is definitely the way to, if you want to hedge against uh, the US dollar, uh, especially as it's going to crater pretty soon here, um, and Bitcoin is going to be your safe haven. Okay, awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tie this up then. Thank you all for joining. And we have some uh, details on everything we discussed down in the comments uh, of the show here. And we look forward to seeing you next week at 4 p.m. Barcelona time. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Jeff, Emilio.